Welcome to the latest episode of Bookish Time with Jenny. I'm one of the librarians at our Carnegie branch. I'm on location in the library. Um, today we're going to talk about armchair traveling. We're going to go to Ireland, which I actually did go to in college. Um, especially during the pandemic where you're not really supposed to travel. It's fun to read about all these different locations that you can't visit at the moment or reminisce about where you have been. Um, today we're going to talk about, um, it's a series, all of a sudden I don't remember what the series is being called. That's the bad thing about adult books, they don't always put the series title on them. But it's a series by Felicity Hayes McCoy. And the first book is called The Library at the Edge of the World. And then there is three more after it, including the latest is the Transatlantic Book Club. They are all um, standalone stories, so you really don't necessarily have to read them in order unless um, you just really want to spend the month in Ireland reading these. Um, I believe they're, they're calling the series Finn Farron. <laughs> Peninsula series um, and actually if if you can very quickly read the transatlantic book club our downtown branch is doing a virtual book club where they're discussing it and they haven't read the other books so they are reading this as a standalone and so this one um, has some um, Irish residents have set up a Skype book club hey they should have made it Zoom. If only, I can't remember exactly when this came out. See, the bad thing is, is these come out in Ireland about a year before we see them. And actually, they are released in a different order in Ireland. So, that also proves you don't have to read them in order. Because the American publisher changed up the order. But they set up, uh, so some Irish residents set up a virtual book club with residents of a small U.S. town where um, generations of Finn Ferrans, that probably sounds better if you have an Irish accent, immigrants have went. So it's people that have ties to that city. Um, and most, most of them do, because like I said, this book one, most of them do have ties back to the library. I myself, as a librarian, I don't care if you tell me it's a standalone, I have to read them all. So, um, but, and I mean, this actually does point blank say a standalone novel continues the stories of the residents of the Finn Farron Peninsula, introducing readers to new characters whom they will surely fall in love with. So you can start with this one, and if you love it, work your way back. I just, it's a personal choice. I can't, knowing there's books that are before this, I, I just can't do it. But, um... I actually am like 17% Irish, I think. Mm -hmm. I love books that are set in other countries. Well, England, Ireland. Should I say um, English-speaking countries for the most part? Yeah, they. I mean, of course, they all have slang that uh, you might not understand. But honestly, there's parts of the U.S. that has slang that we might not know. It just, you know, it's got to be willing to read it and try to figure out what some of the things mean but um and also it's a we're 75 percent of the way through our winter reading program for the month we just want you to record everything you've read this month and if we reach a thousand our mayor will get a pie in the face last i heard we were around 600 i i don't know the latest count so we have a little more than a week left so all you do is you go to our website you register and you just um, turn in the titles for any book you've read in January we want to get to a thousand it is our first time trying a winter reading program we just wanted to give you guys something to do since you should hopefully still be staying at home practicing social distancing wearing your mask no one else is even on this level of the library. That's why I don't have my mask on at the moment. But 
if you want to go to Ireland. Now, actually, they're behind me. Right now, you can probably I'm gonna throw some books. You can probably only get your hands on the first two, and then, like I said, the book club meeting next week on that the transatlantic one. But they are all available. There just might be a wait on some of them since a book club picked it. I actually had picked this series, and then I saw that she was uh, the girl that does the downtown book club picked this book, and I was like, that is so funny that we both picked this book because I, I just figured January doesn't lend itself to a theme but except where do you wish you could be besides Missouri winter want to be in Ireland which they probably have just oh yeah <laughs> this one the mistletoe matchmaker the very first line in the description is the days are turning colder because I was going to say they have crappy weather like we do too um this calls it a delightful read filled with wintry days, cups of tea, and more than a few tidings of comfort and joy. Um, but yes, you know you want to read them. And I purposely wore something green. I actually was in Ireland on St. Patrick's Day many years ago in... St. Patrick's Day is kind of an American. They, they did a parade, but it was for tourists. We were told it was more of an American holiday, so. But, I don't know. Definitely. Let me know if you pick up any of these. I actually might know because if you put them on hold, <laughs> they're at my brain. But, um, until next time, uh, Next month should be fun. I hope to film it on location at a non-library location, but a location that relates to the book I'm going to discuss. And do and I keep doing this. It's my pandemic hair. I need to get my bangs trimmed. But, I don't know. Let me know what you've been reading. I might, you know, everybody needs some suggestions. So, bye.